Well, hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, and today I'm gonna to do some watercoloring on this card with an Ariel stamp set, and I'm gonna make a crystal frame. Sometimes I see a stamp set and I'm not positive what to make of it, but this one I envisioned really quickly some, some crystal. I don't know, it just it looked that way to me, whether or not that's what they intended with the stamp set, I don't know. But I stamped the, the background first, that crystal section, in a gray ink, and then I added some, uh, some black waterproof ink for the flowers themselves. The gray ink, it doesn't matter whether or not it's waterproof, because I'm going to be watercoloring it and keeping it loose, but the, the flowers, I wanted the ink to stay, so I made sure that I used some some nice onyx black ink for that so that I wouldn't end up with a giant mess for my flowers. So I started off by painting the leaves. Now on something like this that has lots of little parts, I sometimes just choose whether I'm going to start with the flowers or the leaves. Sometimes the leaves are easiest because they're leaf shaped. And I threw in some serpentine green and then I'm playing with the nickel azo. And I showed you the Nickel Azo when I first launched my palette, but I haven't played with it much on uh, painting for you. So the Nickel Azo, when you drop it in purely into some wet pigment, it just kind of, it bursts into it. It doesn't, it's not doing a ton of it here, but it is making it definitely yellower. If your brush picks up the serpentine green paint, then it doesn't work as well so make sure you rinse your brush pretty regularly if you're going to drop the color in and we'll uh, add a little bit of perylene green here at the base of each of the leaves while they're wet as well because that perylene green i wanted a green that i didn't have to keep mixing a dark 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 green sure. and sometimes i even mix this with other greens but just dropping a little bit in there gives those leaves a little bit of dimension. Goes from that dark green to the, the mid green and then up to the yellow on the tips. For my flowers, I'm going to use the anthraquinoid scarlet that I have in my palette. And this is a nice red color and it's going to work nicely as well with the nickel azo. But I waited for my leaves to dry because I didn't want to get the red and the green together. So there you go. And I dropped just a little of the nickel azo in the center of each of the flowers and it bursts out from it. It, it just, it, the color kind of eats away at whatever else was there and, and just kind of creates this really nice blend. And I haven't found any colors that it, that it does horribly with, but most of them it works fairly decently with. So now I decided I was going to mix a warm gray. Now it's hard to mix grays sometimes because you're like, well, do is it keeps looking green and then it looks too blue and then it looks too red. But if you mix, not, I wouldn't say equal parts, but if you mix a red, yellow, and blue together and just keep going, and especially when you're going to need a good quantity of it like I'm going to, I'm just going to keep mixing it until I have enough. And if you keep stirring it, you'll you'll notice the color will eventually go to a brown or a gray. And I wanted it to be a, a warm grayish color was what my vision was. So for each of these sections now in the, the little crystal portion, I'm going to choose one section or another to be the darker area. And then I rinsed my brush and I started a little puddle of barely, barely colored water there, that little one at the bottom, versus the darker at the top. And so I'm going to do the same thing again, rinse that brush and have just a little bit of color on the, the brush to fill in that section, but I'm not going to touch the edges. I'm going to leave a white gap in between each of the triangles. And that's going to create that kind of a look that feels like it's crystal. I'm not sure how that that is and why it works that way but that's just the way I'm picturing it and it worked on my card so I'm going to call it good. <laughs> Whether or not it's scientifically true I know there's some angles and some lighting in which you can look at crystal and you get a black line in there but it's a weird kind of broken black line so rather than get into that I thought let's just leave it white and create those little individual shapes. You could also do this crystal in light blues, you could do it in cool grays, you could do it in rainbow colors and make it look like a rainbow crystal. Lots of different ways that you could approach something like this. 
but in each one I'm just going to start with the dark section on one corner and it doesn't matter which corner because with crystals the light refracts in all different kinds of directions doesn't really matter which way you, whether you're going bottom to top top to bottom it's kind of better if you switch them all around and make them all different I'm just going to go around the entire piece of diamond and, and just slowly work my way around and I'm kind of bouncing around different areas because that also helps me to keep from touching one edge to the other in case I end up not leaving enough of a white gap and then they don't bleed into each other. So what I decided to do after that since I still had some of this color left was to go around the whole outside edge and this is almost a challenge to see if I could do this without ending up with my white line going away. So it's very possible that I could ruin this. I knew that when I went into it, but I thought I'd like to see if I could do that and give the whole thing that feel of being a unified picture on my card. And I'm just using clean water around the outside edges to blend it out and holding it with my finger in the middle so that it ends up not getting a big old fingerprint in that beautiful gray wash. You can hear my dogs probably in the distance. They are being nothing but a pain in the butt today. I decided to go ahead and continue making voiceovers anyway, because I would never get my work done if I waited for my dogs to take a nap. So there you go. Missed one little portion of one of the flowers, so I added a little bit in there uh, to finish that area off. And I'll wait, and just as it starts to get, um, get a little lighter, I'll dab some of that off once it dries just a bit. So with the inside, I put just a slight haze of that gray color in a couple sections. And there I'm gonna blend that, that red back in to kind of fuss, fuss around with my flowers just a little bit more and make them all match that blobby that I did. To finish off my card, I put it on a black layer and a red card base. And the sentiment, I just didn't feel like it was gonna look right if that thank you was stamped dead center. So I stamped it off kilter and then I added dot, 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 dot beforehand. I almost added like seven dots just to be silly. And that made it feel a little bit more like it belonged. So thank you so much for joining me for this video. If you liked it, click that like button. Even if you didn't, a like never hurt anybody, did it? So I will see you guys next time. Go make something beautiful and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.